Grand Hotel. Grand Hotel is a 1932 American pre-co-drama film directed by Edmund Goulding and produced by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. The screenplay by William A. Drake is based on the 1930 play of the same title by Drake, who had adapted it from the 1929 novel Mention in Hotel by Vicki Bohm. To date, it is the only film to have won the Academy Award for Best Picture without being nominated in any other category. The film was remade as Weekend at the Waldorf in 1945, and also served as the basis for the 1989 stage musical of the same title. Another remake, to be directed by Norman Jewison, was considered in 1977, which was to take place at Las Vegas MGM Grand Hotel, but the project eventually fell through. Grand Hotel has proven influential in the years since its original release. The line I Want to Be Alone, famously delivered by Greta Garbo, placed number 30 in AFI's 100 Years, 100 Movie Quotes. Also, the phrase Grand Hotel theme has come to be used for any dramatic movie following the activities of various people in a large busy place, with some characters' lives overlapping in odd ways and some of them remaining unaware of one another's existence. In 2007, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Dr. Otternschlag, a disfigured veteran of World War I and a permanent resident of the Grand Hotel in Berlin, observes, people coming, going. Nothing ever happens, after which a great deal transpires. Baron Felix von Gagern, who squandered his fortune and supports himself as a card player and occasional jewel thief, befriends Otto Kringelein, a dying accountant who has decided to spend his remaining days in the lap of luxury. Kringelein's former employer, industrialist general director Praising, is at the hotel to close an important deal, and he hires stenographer Flamchen to assist him. She aspires to be an actress and shows Praising some magazine photos for which she posed, implying she is willing to offer him more than typing if he advances her career. Another guest is Russian ballerina Gruzinskaya whose career is on the wane. When the Baron is in her room to steal her jewelry and she returns from the theater, he hides in her room and overhears as she talks to herself about wanting to end it all. He comes out of hiding and engages her in conversation, and Gruzinskaya finds herself attracted to him. The following morning, the Baron returns Gruzinskaya's jewels, and she forgives his crime. She invites him to accompany her to Vienna, an offer he accepts. The Baron is desperate for money to pay his way out of the criminal group he had been working with. He and Kringelein get a card game going, and Kringelein wins everything, then becomes intoxicated. When he drops his wallet, the Baron stashes it in his pocket, intending to keep the winnings. However, after Kringelein begins to search for his lost belongings, the Baron, who desperately needs the money but has become very fond of Kringelein, pretends to have discovered the wallet and returns it to him. As part of a desperate merger plan, Praising must travel to London, and he asks Flamchen to accompany him. Later, when the two are in her room, which opens onto his, Praising sees the shadow of the Baron rifling through his belongings. He confronts the Baron, the two struggle, and Praising bludgeons the Baron with the telephone, killing him. Flamchen sees what happened and tells Kringelein, who confronts Praising. He insists he acted in self defense, but Kringelein summons the police and Praising is arrested. Gruzinskaya departs for the train station, expecting to find the Baron waiting for her there. Meanwhile, Kringelein offers to take care of Flamchen, who suggests they seek a cure for his illness. As they leave the hotel, Dr. Otternschlag again observes, Grand Hotel. Always the same. People come. People go. Nothing ever happens. Producer Irving Thalberg purchased the rights to Vicky Bum's novel Mention in Hotel for $13,000 and then commissioned William A. Drake to adapt it for the stage. It opened on Broadway at the National Theatre on November 13, 1930, and ran for 459 performances. Pleased with its success, Thalberg had Drake and Bela Blige write the screenplay and budgeted the project at $700,000. There was some controversy about Greta Garbo, with her strong Swedish accent, playing the Russian. The film was also seen as an artistic achievement in its art direction and production quality. The art director, Cedric Gibbons, was one of the most important and influential in the history of American film. The lobby scenes were extremely well done, portraying a 360 degrees desk. This allowed audiences to watch the hotel action from all around the characters. It changed the way sets were made from that point onward. As Grozinskaya, Greta Garbo delivers the line I want to be alone and, 
Immediately following, I just want to be alone. Soon after, in conversation with Baron Felix von Gagern, she says and I want to be alone. Referring to its legendary use as a characterization of her personal reclusive life, Garbo later insisted, I never said I want to be alone, I only said I want to be let alone. There is all the difference. Alfred Rushford Grace in a variety said the film may not entirely please the theatergoers who were fascinated by its deft stage direction and restrained acting, but it will attract and hold the wider public to which it is now addressed. He added, the drama unfolds with a speed that never loses its grip, even for the extreme length of nearly two hours, and there is a captivating pattern of unexpected comedy that runs through it all, always fresh and always pat. Mordaunt Hall of the New York Times praised the performances of Greta Garbo and John Barrymore, in a mostly positive review. The picture adheres faithfully to the original, he said, and while it undoubtedly lacks the life and depth and color of the play, by means of excellent characterizations it keeps the audience on the key feed. Film Daily called it an engrossing drama that never lags in one of the classiest moving picture affairs you've seen in a long time. John Mosher of The New Yorker called it a tricky, clever film praising Goulding as a director at last to give Garbo her due and for his ingenious camera work, relishing, I suspect, the advantages the screen offers in these respects over the stage, where the awkward constant shifting of scenes clogged the action off the play. The film currently holds a rating of 85% on the film review aggregating website Rotten Tomatoes with the site stating the critics' consensus is perhaps less a true film than a series of star-studded vignettes. Grand Hotel still remains an entertaining look back at a bygone Hollywood era. Writing in 2009, Blake Goebel of the Michigan Daily called it the original Ocean's Eleven for its star power and compared it to Gosford Park for its dense structure and stories. He added, Tee pacing is quick, the acting is eloquent and the stories are actually interesting. It's pure theatricality. But Hotel lasted thanks to its simplicity, and the star power doesn't hurt either. This is grand, old Hollywood captured on film. Warner Home Video released the first Region 1 DVD on February 3, 2004. The film is in full-screen format with audio tracks in English and French and subtitles in English, French, and Spanish. Bonus features include Checking Out, Grand Hotel, a documentary about the making of the film, a 1932 newsreel with highlights off the Hollywood premiere. Nothing Ever Happens, a 1933 Vitaphone short film spoofing Grand Hotel, and theatrical trailers. The 2013 Warner Home Video Blu-ray release of Grand Hotel contains an audio commentary track by film historians Jeffrey Vance and Mark Aviera. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.